Hi everyone, Shirtlight here. Having finished the Crossbone Gundam Saga's first part, I decided to cover some games for a change, and with any luck I should be able to pop this one out before the Crossbone video's Halloween release window. Anyway, SD Gundam G Next, a slightly less known game for the SNES, and a somewhat arcade-like Gundam strategy installment. I won't get into it too much, but it's a pretty good one. Now here's the catch, just like with a lot of late 90s Japan only games, this doesn't seem to have an English patch. From what I've seen, there were some efforts to do so, but I have yet to find a completed one. So I've tried my best to somewhat translate parts of the game's menus and UI. Just a quick disclaimer, this translation is a result of labbing, trial and error, transcribing the kanji into Google Translate and asking people who are much better at the language in question. All the fumbles within this translation are solely my fault. Alright then, let's get to it. The title screen and the main menu are conveniently in English. With the scenario mode being composed of preset stages, the campaign mode letting you pick ground and space maps for a custom match, and lastly, the config map mode. Which is just a custom match that lets you pick from all the ground, space and moon maps. Of course, there's also a box on the bottom that lets you load and saves. Before you start a game on a campaign or config map, you're given another menu, where you can set the amount of units one can move each turn, in case you want to recreate the gameplay of older installments, such as Scramble Wars or the old Gachapon Senshi games, the amount of turns and the so-called team mode. All that it does is that it splits the game's six combined factions, like the EFF, into their 12 era-specific ones, such as the Ayug and Zanskare. The menu in the middle covers the victory and scoring conditions. The kanji there was a little pixelated, but here's a translation that's close enough. The player slots are fairly self-explanatory, and there's an option window to the right of it called the production mode, which will come in handy later. Second tab is in English, and more or less foolproof. Which brings us to the third tab. If you checked off the master unit option, here you can pick what mobile suit will be your team's master unit. The four numbers on the unit's portrait is the HP slash energy, total movement points and the ammo pools for the attacks assigned to the B and A buttons. By the way, these will start at max level, meaning that if the mobile suit in question has an upgraded mode, you can get it right away by stashing it inside your nearest base or a battleship. You get a nifty little stereo slash mono switch the option to change the background music of your team and which controller you will use. The small tab by the side just changes whether the default controls for combat sequences will be set to manual or automatic. You can change it in-game by tapping the select button, so it isn't too big of a deal. With the game setup, you can finally get to playing. First off, you can open up your options menu by tapping the X button or whichever key you bound it to. There's two additional options added to the menu should you run a game of three or more players or have the production mode on, which I'll address in a little bit. So going from top we have the view menu. This menu lets you view your bases, units, the current score ratios of all the teams and access the minimap. The button right underneath lets you zoom out to the main space map. It can also be done by tapping the B button by the way. This option is exempt from games of G-Next that feature only one map. Under the space button lies the technical button, that lets you spend the game's currency on raising your tech level, which in turn gives you access to better and more efficient units. There is also a button which you can use to decommission units. It doesn't give you money back, but it does clear up the clutter. The config tab can be accessed too. But there are certain things you can't change anymore once you already start around, such as the game rules. Underneath that, you can find the save button as well as the pass turn button, which are more than self-explanatory. If you remember, I did bring up two additional tabs that can appear with the two being the production list and the alliance tab. The production list lets you substitute up to 40 units from your faction with others, which is one of the perks of production mode. As for the alliance tab, it lets you informally declare an alliance with another player. This is a somewhat mutually beneficial agreement which makes you share units, but at the same time, each team's score is counted separately and there is a non-zero chance of your new ally screwing you over. Obviously, if you attack or capture your quote-unquote allies stuff, the deal becomes null. 
As a little side note, the ship type units you get from this mechanic get custom colors, which is neat. Anyways, that's the main menus. Now let's move to the last three parts of the game that I have to address. First off, the bases. These are strategic points on the map that can be used to produce units, such as ships, mobile suits, and related stuff like subflight systems and HLV landing pods. As such, all of these have standardized stat sheets for mobile suits and ships. Starting with the mobile suit stat sheets, the game tells you its name, cost in the game's currency, its HP, which is listed as energy, the amount of tiles it can move per turn, the amount of total tiles it can move before needing a resupply, how long will making one take, the resupply time, the supply point value of the mobile suit, as in how much points will it cost for a ship to resupply it, and its capabilities to move in space, on land, underwater and in the air. Lastly, it also tells you whether it can capture points or bombard distant enemies. If it can do the latter, the X is replaced with a number. There's also some flavor text below. Stat sheets for ship type units are fairly similar, sharing the layout for the name, cost, HP, energy, movement per turn, and total movement points, production time and resupply time. Under that we get the bombardment range in tiles and carry capacity. You can also notice this simple ratio, described only as supply. The number on the left is basically the amount of supply points you can spend on resupplying mobile suits which you do by docking them back in the ship uh, in the same manner as in the G-Generation franchise. Though it is worth pointing out that in the case of certain high-end mobile suits, sometimes just a single supply point won't suffice, so uh, if you really expect to fully restock something like the GPO-3 or the you know, GPO-25 Salis or, or the Hyakushiki just from a simple Salamis-class ship, uh, I doubt that it would be possible in all situations. As for the number on the right, it responds to how many times can this unit resupply a ship within the range of one tile. Some ships have both, some have neither. And special ships, like the Nail Argama and Jupitris, have some additional gimmicks that will come in handy later. The sheet also lists whether the ship can move in space, on the moon or in the air. If there's anything you want to produce, tap the A button and then the X button to confirm. Speaking of stats, each player gets a stat card in the lower corner of the screen. Here's where you can find unit stats once they're deployed. Now you might have already found out how to move certain units around and the simple yet effective cursor controls that can be grasped with ease. However, there's some options and untranslated kanji as well. If your mobile suit can bombard, you get a two option menu upon selecting it. The top one is always movement and the one below is the ranged attack. Mobile suits like the GPO-25 Salis, the Dovan Wolf, the Hyakushiki and the Full Armor Double Zeta can also perform an attack that covers multiple tiles at the expense of some of its health slash energy. These can be steered using the left and right bumpers and the button to do so is underneath the movement tab. This is also the case with ships, though there is a button for deploying mobile suits at the very bottom. Also, if a ship can both bombard and perform multi-tile attacks, the button for that will be between bombardment and the mobile suit deployment. When you are using a ship capable of resupplying, this thing will pop up right under the movement option. It lets you pick a ship in a one-tile radius and resupply it. There's also certain menus that appear based on specific situations. If there's a unit on top of a base, you get the option to pick between a base and the unit. If a ship is on top of an airport, launch pad, mass driver, whatever you want to call it, you get the option to either launch it into space or keep it placed on the tile. In a similar manner, if you place a unit on top of a base, you can either dock it inside the base for resupplies, assuming you still have space in there, or keep the unit on top of it. Lastly, should you capture the colony laser, it can be commanded to either move or charge up a deadly beam. When two or more mobile suits of opposing teams are on adjacent tiles, they can start fighting, which starts the fight sequence. Of course, you can control one of your mobile suits manually, but there's also command presets. Going from the top, they are normal. Focus on a target. Guard a specific unit. Focus on survival. Charge in, or more accurately, put everything into offense. A less risky variant to this one is the focus on offense command. 
Obviously, when fighting alongside more units, it is possible to both order the other units to do stuff while having full control of a single unit. And at the long last, since this video is already somewhat long-winded, are the pop-ups. Ascend, Descend, Boarded, Docked, Out of Movement Points slash Fuel, Unable to Resupply, Face Change, Resupplied, Point Occupied, Moving through Maps, Colony Dropped, yes, you can drop colonies in this game, and lastly, Nuclear Pulse Engine Obtained. Alright, that should be most of it. Thanks for watching and this is Shirtlad, signing out.